Hello and welcome to Interview, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Geraldine Bisset Joseph. Today we are actually joined by Dennis Rosenberg, also known as Chef Dennis, who Hi. is actually a chef who has had a career as a chef rather yes. um, for many years over in England, even though he's a native of St. Lucia. Now, on top of that, Chef Dennis has actually also published a wonderful book of recipes, a cookbook maybe mm -hmm. I, I should call it, and he's here to talk to us about his career, his life, and the book today. So thanks, thanks for joining us today, Thank Chef you. Dennis. Thank you for having me. No problem. Now, as I said in my introduction, you are actually a native of St. Lucia, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. You were actually born here. Where exactly are you from on the island? Well, I'm from Grizzly. Um, okay. I was born in um, Grizzly in 1957. Mm -hmm. And I went to school, the primary school, next to the church and the convent. Mm -hmm. That was those days. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to England when I was about 11. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. And I was just going to be 12. And then um, I completed my schooling in, um, in London. Okay. It's London. All right, brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Now, as we, I have said, you've had a, a career in the culinary arts. Yes. Did you always know that's where your career would go, or was that something that happened later on in life? Something that happened later in life, but um, uh, as a St. Lucian, right, we all learned how to cook when we were very little. Right. Because we used to go hunting for birds and fishing and stuff like that, right? Okay. So okay. Um, when I catch whatever I catch, my grandmother would show me how to clean it and mm -hmm. then show me how to cook it. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. from there, you learn the culinary art of cooking, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. locally, of course. Okay, all right. You know, mm -hmm. but when I went to England, um, I have four, four siblings. Now, uh, my mother used to go to work, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to look after them, and so I had to cook. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Right? You had mm -hmm. to be like, um, I would say, like the helper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So then you get, you get the feel of cooking, and then um, uh, I came back to St. Lucia in 1973. Okay. Because I went over in 1969. Mm -hmm. I came back in 73. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I started working for the Holiday Inn Hotel. Okay. So that's where it all started, really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, started as a kitchen porter. Okay. And then um, I was so interested in cooking that the, sh the head chef said, what are you doing as a kitchen porter? Okay. Why don't you do an apprenticeship? Mm -hmm. And um, after a while, um, he, I got my white, my white uniform mm -hmm. and then started cooking. And I wanted to know everything. Okay. I wanted to know everything to do with cooking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, after about two years, he said, you're so interested in cooking. Well, where would you like to go mm -hmm. to, right? Because mm -hmm. the Holiday Inn was the b b biggest hotel at the time, right. company. Okay. So I said, because I went to school in, in London, mm -hmm. London would be a good place because okay. I've got family over there. Right. So he called the Swiss Cottage Holiday Inn and everything, arranged everything for me, and then I completed my apprenticeship oh, in England. That's fantastic. Okay. So I was for one of the lucky ones. Okay. Okay. You know? All right. But it's, it's hard work. It's not easy. Being mm -hmm. a chef, mm -hmm. it's not easy. Okay. All right. Yeah. And there's, I understand there's actually a, a lot of different establishments that you worked oh in yes, as well yes, in yes. England. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that and what was your experience like? Well, um, when I went to the Swiss Cottage Holiday and um, after about a month, mm -hmm. I was in charge of a whole section. Mm -hmm. Now, I was only 18 years old. But at so time, yeah. okay. to be in charge of a whole section in mm -hmm. the hotel, which is the ladder, um, you're doing all the buffets, you're doing all the cool stuff, patties mm -hmm. and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, was, it was unheard of. Okay. So um, I did that for about 10 months to a year. Then I decided to leave to go and further my knowledge in cooking, you see? Mm -hmm. And then I went to work for the Tower Thistle Hotel, Tower okay. Bridge, that big hotel beside the bridge. Yeah. That's where I worked. I, oh, was, wow. I was there for about eight years. Yeah. And um, I started as a first commie. I went up to second, second chef, which is the sous chef. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I was in charge of the whole place in the mm -hmm. evenings because the chef, the head chef never worked nights. Mm -hmm. So I was in charge of about 110 chefs. Wow. This, this is big. Yeah. You okay. Know? So I was responsible for anything, anything that happened. We had a cavalry that turns out 150 a night. Mm. I'm oh sorry, 1,500 a night. Mm, mm. We have a prince's room, which is the a la carte, mm -hmm. which turns up 150. And then we had um, another place we call the picnic basket, which is like a fast food sort of thing. Okay. So you have to go from one to the other, make sure everybody's fine. Mm -hmm. Plus we had a kitchen on every floor. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a lot of things. And then um, that's where I learned my management skills. Mm -hmm. Because you must realize a lot of chefs, when they work for someone, mm -hmm. They never get to the management stage. Yeah. So they go and open restaurants and they have no clue about how to cost, how mm -hmm. to... And I was fortunate enough to 
to be educated in that field. Okay, okay. And um, because I don't know if you ever heard of um, Thistle Hotel owned um, hotel like Colum um, Columbia Hotel in a, in a Mabalach, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They own the Strand, they own a um, big company. Right. And I was the first black person in management wow. in the whole company, right? Which for me, right, was. You go to like Christmas parties, mm -hmm. and you are the only black face there. And it's, uh, it's it, it <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it felt good, right? Yeah, because you yeah. you know you know you've worked so hard to get there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's what I've always instilled in my kids, right? Um, mm -hmm. Even though they were born in the UK, mm -hmm. I said you have to work double as hard to get the job, yeah. Because you are not you are not from there. You are not indigenous to, yeah, to the country, yeah, yeah. So they had to work very hard for where they are now, mm -hmm. and we are very pleased where they are now. Brilliant. Right? Okay, that's because all of them went to university, which is good. But okay. And I didn't have the chance to go to university. Okay. All right. Brilliant. You know? Okay. All right. That's a great way for us to just segment off into a, a commercial break. Okay. So just stay with me and you stay with us and we'll be back in a few moments. Excellent. Keeping hands clean is important for okay, good health. So However, after a disaster, staying clean is hard to do, especially if there is no pipe borne water. Simple things you can do to stay clean and remain healthy are wash your hands with soap and clean water. If these are not available, sanitizers with alcohol are options. Wash your hands many times during the day, before preparing food, eating, caring for a sick person or baby, treating a cut, wound or sore. Wash hands after using the bathroom, changing diapers, caring for animals, caring for sick or injured persons, after handling garbage. Washing your hands is one of the best ways to prevent illness. For further information, contact the Bureau of Health Education at telephone number 468-5349. Welcome back to Interview, and I am here today with Chef Dennis. Hi. Now, Chef Dennis, before um, we went to the break, you were telling us a little bit about your career. But I understand you also opened your own restaurant. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Um, it came about um, because um, I, after I left the Tower Thistle Hotel, mm -hmm. I went to work for the Trocadero, right. um, which is a massive place on, on Leicester Square, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the Piccadilly. Right. And uh, from the, um, the company which I used to work for um, owned the biggest fish restaurant in the UK. Mm -hmm. So it was called Wheeler's okay. Fish Restaurant. Mm -hmm. So um, I, was, I had the opportunity to open um, one on the King's Road, Chelsea, mm -hmm. which is the top place to open a restaurant, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And then after a few years, um, I went, well, a friend of mine, introduced me to someone that have a restaurant in the, in the America, mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So I went and opened a restaurant for them. Okay. That's what I was, I was just opening restaurants everywhere for people. Okay, yeah. That was my... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, the area manager of Wheeler's um, got a job in Norwich. Now, I had never heard of Norwich before. Okay. So he called me up, he says, um, I've got a place in Norwich, um, a, a hotel. Mm -hmm. I would like you to come and help me. Mm -hmm. I said, where the hell are you? He says, I'm in Norwich. I said, yeah. where is Norwich? Uh -huh. That was about 120 miles from London. Right. So he said, um, take the M11 and you'll get there. Mm. I went there and then um, I stayed there for about three years. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to open my own restaurant. Okay. Um, which is a French Creole restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, which is partly why the book is written. Mm -hmm. And uh, my re first restaurant was opened in 1992. Mm -hmm. Then... Um, I opened another one in 1998, which is about um, seven miles away from where I was. Mm -hmm. But that, that was an old pub which I transformed into a restaurant okay. and then transformed it into a guest house also mm -hmm. and um, put some apartments onto it. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and, and now, now it's a 19 bedroom guest house, you see? Wow, okay. But I then know. I removed the restaurant from there, I put it, mm -hmm. back, I put it back exactly where I started. <laughs> okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. Um, Two years ago, I decided to retire because I think mm -hmm. I've done enough. Okay. <laughs> That's why I wrote the book because okay. my, my clients kept asking me for recipes. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, um, when, I, when I retire, I'm going to write a book. Mm -hmm. So I started the book in 2015. Right. And I retired in 2017. Oh, okay. And the book was written. Oh, wow. You okay. know, and this, this is it. Okay, all right. Okay. Now, what kind of recipes can one expect to, to, to find in there? Is okay. it like just desserts, savory? No, what no. You have everything. Like? You have from soups to mm -hmm. um, uh, dumpling with um, pig foot. Okay. You have um, breadfruit, breadfruit soup. You have breadfruit cake. You have mm -hmm. things like um, crayfish tails. Mm -hmm. You have things like soft shell crab. Mm -hmm. You have shrimps. You have okay, um, so it's everything. dorado. Okay. You have sea bream. Mm -hmm. You have gombo fasi. Now, okay. gombo fasi is a speciality of ours mm -hmm. where we um, open the gombo, 
we take the seeds out mm -hmm. and we stuff it with garlic cheese and then we make a beignet uh -huh. all right and then we we um we fry it that, that is sounds, amazing that sounds very good it is, it is, it is. <laughs> that we sounds have very we good. have fish balls uh -huh. just, uh, just a sort of um mm -hmm. we have fish balls we mm -hmm. have um because uh, well i know here right you don't do all this right but mm -hmm. what the whole idea of the book is to educate people from saint lucia also mm -hmm. the amount of stuff we have here that we do not use it to the full potential okay okay mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. with breadfruit you could make a whole hot lot of stuff. anything you can make with potato you can make a breadfruit right right mm -hmm. and people don't take that on, on board okay you know mm -hmm. and um, that's what i do i i make a um, cake with coconut with pumpkin with with um golden apple right i use everything here yes to make something different out of uh, okay i understand you right? okay all right and okay. and this is why the book is written okay no problem and if one wanted to purchase it where could we actually get one well you get from me um, um i'll give you my email address okay brilliant um or uh, my telephone number mm -hmm. but it's also on amazon okay and you could read up the the review about it well mm -hmm. I d it's only recently i read up the i didn't realize right okay but yeah. the review is damn good okay <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I know it's, uh, it, it, it's the title is actually um, a taste of the French, French Caribbean. Caribbean yeah. um, in saying that, though, are there recipes from, or would you say from all the other French countries as oh well? Yeah, oh yeah. So you actually touch on. Oh yeah, it's 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 from from even New Orleans. Okay, I get you. Right. All right. You have okay. Catfish and stuff like black and catfish, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so like because all these things are on my menu okay. because my my restaurant encompasses the cruel way of cooking. Mm -hmm. Not only for Saint Lucia, but also mm -hmm. for New Orleans or yeah. Martinique and different places. Okay. You know, okay. I got Kalalu in here. Okay. Now Kalalu, a lot of people don't even know how to make Kalalu properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. But Kalalu was made right uh, like during the slavery days, right? And you put, you have your carbohydrate, you have protein, you have your spinach. Um, well, Kalalu. Yes. Right? Yeah. But people use spinach or people use dashin, which right. is dashin is not right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And all this, right? This is authentic recipes, right? Mm -hmm. From the past. Okay. And I've made it for. The, f the present to use mm -hmm. properly. Okay, brilliant. All yeah. right. Now, I would love to taste some of the stuff that's in there. I, I know I have to get a copy of the book. Uh, yeah, believe yeah. me. And it's been wonderful um, talking to you today. But before you go, can you just um, say a few words maybe about, you touched on your, your, your children and how you've inspired them to work hard to get whatever they want. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people here are interested in the culinary arts. What would you say to them? Um, somebody who's had a career like yours in regards to staying with it because I know it's not easy it's so, not easy so what would you say to them to just inspire them to, to motivate one them? thing you must have right is passion mm -hmm. cooking you do not go in the country uh, to make money right that's the first thing you have to do you have to have the love for it mm -hmm. that's why um, I have three kids and I didn't want any of them to go into the country uh, okay because I want them to find their own Path. way in life right and that is my passion mm -hmm. but they all helped mm -hmm. my first daughter started working in the restaurant at nine years old mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and they could manage the restaurant whilst we my wife and i are going on holiday okay they managed it because we had a chef okay so they could manage the restaurant mm -hmm. all of them worked in the restaurant mm -hmm. my my first daughter right you know she's um a pharmacist at mm -hmm. uh adam brooks hospital which is mm -hmm. one of the biggest hospitals in england mm -hmm. and she has her own clinic and everything mm -hmm. the second one it's a, another daughter. She's mm -hmm. an accountant. Mm -hmm. She works for the um, Jane Innes Center, which is the center to, for agriculture and all the genetic modification and stuff like that. Of, right. right? Mm -hmm. And the third one is the first black person at the age of 28, mm -hmm. assistant head teacher in a secondary school in the UK. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And this, this it just um, make me feel proud of them because they've worked very hard. Mm -hmm. And I told them from the beginning, from the time, mm -hmm. you have to work harder than the person that was from there mm -hmm. to get where you want to get to okay All and right. and uh, it's just hard work and passion in what you do and it's stick to it brilliant okay brilliant thank you for joining us today we have run out of time sadly so please come back sometime and talk to us some more because i would uh, maybe even sort of like to go into detail if yeah. into some of your recipes with you because yeah but I, I also some something i must say mm. i was going to open a, uh, um, a cookery school here actually mm -hmm. in my um in my house right but um I'm going to see how it goes. Okay, no problem. All right. Thank you for joining us, Chef Dennis. Take care. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice thank you me. for watching Interview. Do join us again next time. Bye bye for now. How was that? That was good. That was fine. We're just going to come in for a